Okay, everybody, it's Ethan from WordTech again, and I have another video for you today. This one's a little bit different from some of the ones we've done in the past, which are generally review videos and whatnot you guys have seen. Um, this time, I'm planning to tackle this mess here, this big, wonderful cable management mess, um, and make it look pretty. So, I've got a lot of components here. I'm going to go over what I have here, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and get a time-lapse uh, footage of me setting it up here and then I'll try and do a uh, conclusion piece at the end. So uh, anyway, really quick, just to explain what I plan to do, I'm going to be moving this further over there so that it's not blocked by the monitor. I don't like the uh, window here on my Primo being blocked by the monitor. It doesn't work out very good. So I want to be able to see in the case. I want it further away so that it's a little bit quieter, even though it's not loud by any means. And I want to get rid of the cable mess, which you can't really see on there, but back behind here. Huge mess of cables. It's crazy. So, let's get started. Okay, so uh, here I have quite a few different components. Um, I ordered all these. This all came to like 250 ish dollars on Amazon. Of course, though, that is, you know, your mileage may vary. It depends on what you need. Since I'm moving my desk, I needed a lot of cable extensions, as you can see here. I'm moving my computer further on the desk. Um, some of the six foots and stuff weren't long enough. So I needed that. Um, you guys, you know, if you're not planning to move the computer around and you're just doing your desk, you probably just need the clip stuff. But I'm going to go over it all anyway. So this right here is kind of the uh, centerpiece of everything. It's called the J-Channel. Uh, this is on Amazon. Speaking of which, all this, I'll have links uh, to the Amazon product pages in the description. Uh, so if you're looking to buy any of it, just go do it. So anyway, here's the J-Channel. Uh, it looks kind of rubber. It's actually plastic, though. Uh, the picture on Amazon looked like it was rubber. Plastic's nicer, though. Uh, it's got an adhesive strip on the back, and it basically mounts on the desk. I hope you guys can kind of see this. It mounts on the desk like so. Um, and so, as you can imagine, if this were the side of the desk, it mounts on there adhesively, and then you run the uh, cables inside the groove here so that all your cables are hidden in this nice little channel. Uh, pretty convenient thing. I thought it was cool. Only thing I'm worried about is, as you can see, it's a little bit small, so I'm really hoping that everything actually fits, um, all the cables actually fit inside. I have a feeling they will, but just barely, because I have quite a bit of stuff here. Anyway, so I've got two J channels, one for each of the two uh, tables back here. These are, uh, I believe, 48 inches. The tables back there are 5 foot, but I mean, close enough, because uh, I don't plan to move you know, everything to the very edge, and I also, my cables aren't going to be running to the very edge of that table, so it should work out pretty good. Now I'll go over the cables, and then I'll go over all the clips and stuff that I have. So I've got right here four uh, USB 3.0 extensions. Um, I, they came in packs of two. I believe these are by uh, Cable Matters, yeah, which I've always been pretty happy with them. They package their cables pretty well and stuff. Two packs of them, pretty cheap, six foot. Um, so these will actually be for the USB hubs that I have here, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so I got that. Uh, video cables. I've got my uh, passive DisplayPort to HDMI cable right here, 10 foot. I've got a 10 foot HDMI cable, and I've got a 10 foot DVI cable. I also have another 10 foot HDMI cable that I'm currently using, so uh, I didn't put that out on the table. But that's I have three here, and then one more 10 foot, 10 feet just to be safe, so that everything can be hidden well and have a little bit of extra length. I actually ordered two of these uh, 14 foot Cat6 cables, just because I'm also using one of those right now. Uh, these are really cheap though, I recommend going to Cat6 over Cat5e just because it's not much more expensive. And These are guaranteed to handle gigabit and higher, whereas Cat5e will sometimes handle gigabit, but it, it can be iffy about it, it depends on distance and stuff. So these are certified gigabit guaranteed. Um, so we got that, and then I have right here three, uh, I believe these are 10 foot, they might be 6 foot actually, they're probably 6 foot. Um, yeah, 6 foot, 3.5 millimeter extensions by Cable Direct. These I'm actually really impressed with. As you can see, I have two wrapped up, but I already tried this one out. Um, I've got uh, Barodynamic uh, DT770 Pros that I'll be using, um, and they're 250 ohm headphones. I was really concerned about doing this project because the cable on it's not long enough, although it, it is long. It's a, you probably can't see it, but it's a coiled cable. I haven't run it under the desk and behind. But um, I was really worried about sound quality reduction because I've had a lot of crappy 3.5 millimeter cables. I tried to find some that were nice. This was the best that I could find on Amazon. Uh, Monoprice might have something similar. But um, I ordered them, and a little bit, like I said, a little bit concerned. Uh, I have three because I got the, uh, the headphones, uh, microphone, and my speakers. 
but when I tried this one out, I'm actually really impressed. I did not notice even a little bit of sound quality reduction, even on such a high end pair of headphones with it. So I highly recommend this cable if you need something that's high quality, not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world, but they're not very expensive either. Something that's high quality for a high quality pair of headphones or whatever. So got three of those. Um, then over here, I have uh, a couple, just a pack, multi-pack of the Command 3M adhesive strips. Got these just in case I wanted to mount things and, you know, like USB hub here if I want to mount it somewhere. Then I got the adhesive strips there, just a bunch of extras just in case. So they sell these in big packs. These are, again, from Amazon. Everything here is from Amazon. Um, and then right here, I've got my favorite surge protector pretty much of all time uh, because of the price. You know, if, if you have no worry about budget, you can go with something higher end. But it's about 25 30 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I actually have one mounted behind that monitor there that's running everything here, and I've been so happy with it, I've ordered a second one because I'll need it. Um, but it's a 12 port with uh, swivel connectors. So nice for those annoyingly big bricks that you get on things sometimes, especially some monitors and whatnot. So swivel connectors, really, really convenient. Um, really thick cable here. I actually don't know the gauge reading on it, but it's pretty thick. I'd say 1300 watts or less with your power supply if you know you're going to be totally fine um, What I mean by that is you know if your power supply obviously if it's 1300 watts and you're only pulling 500 You don't have to worry But I mean like people that are pumping you know a 1600 watt power supply and using 1500 watts or something They probably want that power supply to be directly plugged into the wall But this here will handle almost anything with this thick gauge wire. It's also got phone protection uh, for the surge protector not really that anybody usually cares about that, but, but it's there. And it's got coax protection. And then it's got this nice little cable management clip, which is pretty convenient. So, um, power button on it. It's pretty beefy. Um, I believe it has a, I think it's a $300,000 connected equipment protection warranty. Uh, they don't really, it's a little bit hard to find out how long that warranty goes. But basically that's so that you can have confidence in plugging all your stuff into this and not worrying about it. Um, but yeah, that one there has done me really good. So I just ordered a second one because it's my favorite surge protector. So over here, uh, moving on to more cables and stuff. I've got this right here. It is a um, 13 port. There's actually one on the end there. Um, 13 port USB 2.0 hub. Uh, this is just for anything from like my webcam to little accessories and stuff that I, that I have. Um, got this, it's got a double power switch so you can turn one end off if you want to save power if you care about that. Um, ordered this, I think it was about 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, pretty disappointed honestly. Uh, I don't plan to replace it but I'm a little bit frustrated with it. So um, it comes with a power brick as well. Uh, and this isn't a full review, I'll have a full written review on Amazon but this power brick here is to power it so that you can make sure that everything gets as much power as it needs on such a large hub, right? Um, and of course it'll still work without this, but you guys can't really see it here. Let me see if I can bring that up to the camera. There we go. You can see how the DC connector, DC connector and there's bent. So there. So yeah, as you can see the DC connector inside, uh, I just brought it up close to the camera. I may cut that part out though, but if you could see that, if I did leave that in the video, um, I've, the DC plug connector in here has been pushed up inside. I've tried bending it back down, but something stuck on it, and I don't really feel like taking it apart and voiding the warranty to look at it. I also don't plan to get it replaced, though, but um, it'll still work. It just means that, you know, not as many power-hungry devices could be running off of it. A little disappointing there, kind of frustrated. I mean, it's cheap, but I was expecting something not complete crap. Um, so, anyway, that's just a quick blurb on that, a warning about that. So, continuing on with everything. I've got this by uh, Weemi, or Wemi, or I don't know, Wame, I don't, I don't know how you'd say it, W-E-M-E, -E, probably Weemi. Um, it's a USB 3.0 card reader, um, which this will be used for my camera when I do get a new one, which actually I'm filming on my Note 5 right now, but eventually, you know, a nicer camera. And so I'm going to be taking this one and uh, mounting it under the desk so I can slide cards into it, so that's part of what these adhesive clips are for. Um, USB 3.0, I have an internal 5 uh, quarter inch by 2.0 one. Way too slow, annoys the crap out of me, so decided to just grab a 3.01 while I was at it. Not very expensive. Moving on to uh, more hubs. Oh, one last thing, that Weemi one, it comes with a USB Type-C to a uh, USB Type-A here adapter, uh, USB 3.0, so it wouldn't be running at 3.1 speeds even though it's a Type-C connector. Um, but 
Anyway, point is it comes with one. Not a big deal, but you know. And then uh, here we go. I have um, two of these Anchor uh, four port USB 3.0 hubs. Um, they're built to be able to power pretty power hungry devices without an actual power outlet. They just plug directly into the computer. Of course, that depends on how high uh, amperage output your USB port has. But um, I got two of them. They actually, surprisingly, they did, and I don't think this is actually listed on the Amazon page for them. They come with uh, Velcro adhesive clip or adhesive uh, pads here which are pretty convenient, so you can mount them on the desk or under the desk or anywhere you need to, you can mount them, but you can still remove them if you need to without um, having to actually remove the adhesive if you just want to take it with you to use it somewhere else temporarily or whatever. So it comes with those, which I was surprised about. And I wanted to just do a quick little thing on these. I have been really impressed with Anchor overall as a brand. They make really good stuff. I've, I have a lot of their things. Um, they're kind of expensive, you know, you, you'll look at it and you'll go, oh wow, you know, a USB 3.0 hub for like 25 bucks or whatever. But once you get it and you open up the package, you start to realize why you're paying a little more for it. So this is a perfect example of that right here. It comes with the adhesive piece, like I said, which is just kind of a nice little thing, but it's made from solid, fairly thick aluminum actually. Um, lightweight, but feels heavy duty. It doesn't feel low quality by any means. Really well built, thick USB cable here. Um, white one, you know, it's thicker than a lot of the USB cables that would come on a lot of the uh, other devices out there. And then you got your four ports with the light here, but it just it just feels high quality. And the camera really can't grasp, grasp that for you. And uh, this is not a sponsored video by any means, but I just wanted to point that out because out of all the products I have here, I'm probably happiest with these just because of how nice they are. And I've had the same experience with Anchor before, whether that be their batteries, their other USB or Ethernet hubs, or, or their uh, charging bricks. I have quite a bit of their stuff. I, it might actually have a review up of a charging brick on the channel by this point. Um, so I just wanted to point those out. Two of those, um, one of them is just basically gonna be for flash drives, external hard drives, whatever I plug into it. Um, the other one is actually gonna be set up specifically one full USB 3.0 port for the bandwidth of all my peripherals. So. Um, and by peripherals, I mean time-sensitive peripherals. So my mouse, my keyboard, if I get a game board, and my gamepad, will all be connected to the single hub with 3.0 bandwidth just to make sure that nothing gets interrupted or, um, you know, just to make sure there's no latency issues. Whereas, you know, if I have, you know, 10 things plugged into this guy here, you know, there, there, it is possible for there to be latency issues. They wouldn't be very large, but I just wanted to minimize that risk as much because I do a lot of gaming on the system behind me. Um, so there's that. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end here. So these are actually pretty awesome. Um, they're by Blue Lounge Cable Drops. So they're little adhesive cable clips. Um, they're big enough to hold usually one cable. You might be able to get two in there if it was a really small cable. Um, but they're mostly for routing things around on the desk. And uh, I'm going to be using these to uh, mount under the desk to route the cables to like the hubs and stuff. Speaking of which, these will be mounted under the desk. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using these. So I got two six packs of those. Um, just make sure I have enough. I probably only actually need one pack, but you know, whatever. And then these two here, these are, um, quirky cables, I believe is what they're called. Um, these are sold on Amazon. Again, the link will be in the description to these. Got two of these. They, uh, sit on your desk, uh, and they manage your cables like so. So say my hand were the desk, they manage your cables like that so that all your cables can kind of come through one point. So you have, you know, five, six cables on your desk and you can put more than one in between each clip here. And uh, they're able to just hold the cables there so that you don't have cables flinging all over the desk. They're all just kind of routed into one spot. Really convenient. I got two. Might not need two, but again, I was just ordering a little extra just to be safe. Um, but they don't look like it, and the video does not capture this at all, and the images don't capture this at all. But they're actually really heavy. This one here weighs probably upwards of a pound. Um, they're, they're heavier than you would expect, and they've got lead weights or some kind of metal weight inside under the rubber that's why you can't bend it it feels solid um that's so that when you're you know using it you put it on the desk and your cables even when you're tugging on them and stuff they're not going to fall behind the desk that's not going to fall off the desk now of course you could adhesively mount it if you wanted to as well but it should work just fine for most things so i got two of those um so that's going to be it for all the uh cable accessories here um so there's that. I'll go ahead and try and get that time lapse in this video. If I don't, it's just going to jump straight to my conclusion. I'll see how I can get that time lapse um, going and see if it actually looks good. Be a pretty long time lapse. But anyway, point is, kind of an overview of what I'm getting. Uh, maybe to give you guys an idea of what you would be doing for cable management. And once I'm done and that conclu 
excuse me, in that conclusion section there, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about you know issues I may have had doing something this extreme when it comes to cable management, and you know tips I may have or things that I should have bought. Um, one last thing too, another recommendation that I'd say to have, and I already have some, but just not on the desk here, are zip ties. Lots and lots of zip ties. You can't ever have enough zip ties. You can get packs of 200 on Amazon of various sizes and colors for like 10 bucks. So just zip ties. You'll probably want zip ties to keep the cables managed. Anyway, let's get on to the time lapse.
It's been 700 degrees in here since you came in I could swear that this room has been running out of air And now it's starting to spin You make me feel kind of bad, kind of good Okay guys, so uh, this is the cable management stuff set up. I want to kind of show you what I did so that you can get an idea of uh, how to do this yourself if you're interested in this kind of project. Uh, sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky. I'm trying to, trying to do my best, but um, anyway, it's not on a tripod right now or anything. So uh, anyway, here we go. So I'll show you. So here's what the top side looks like. Um, got my case there. Uh, all the cables are in the back. Um, now, I actually had them all zip-tied into a group, but I had to cut that zip-tie because of a uh, broken cable, which I'll talk about more a little bit later. But um, anyway, I had those zip-tied, and then uh, the cables run along this channel in the back, as you can probably see. Let's see if I can get a little more light there. I got my little, my little light that uh, I mount on the back so I can see my rear I.O. Anyway, though, um, runs along the back side there. And then I feed some of them out. Now this right here is a little bit clutter, um, but you can't tell except from this angle only. Uh, there's not too much I can do to avoid that because I got the wires coming off the speaker. I may uh, try zip tying these together or something like that. I'm not completely sure, but um, it's about as good as I'm uh, that I was able to get it at, in the time I had. Um, anyway, and then I got you know my uh, joystick here and uh, some other stuff. So uh, this cable actually was the one that was broken. This one right here, um, or sorry, the, the longer version of this. And so I had to grab my six foot version. So that's why it's not jammed down in the J channel. It's kind of coming out early is to make sure it has enough length to connect to the monitor here. So um, that's anyway, that's over there. Pretty clean overall though. Uh, this I'll actually be probably moving somewhere. This here, not sure yet, but um, you know, overall just have some room for a little bit of peripheral accessories and stuff. You know, kind of gives me a little bit of space to work with and, and you know it looks pretty to have like my mouse accessories sitting over here uh, and whatnot so uh, anyway here's the uh, other part of the setup let me move this table really quick and pull a chair out so you can see got my uh, G710 plus there uh, with uh, the transparent keycaps that I got uh, online to uh, replace them anyway looked kind of cool but uh, yeah so here's the four monitors that I have um, and my car on the monitors <laughs> but uh, anyway uh, here's the top of the desk. As you can see, it looks really clean, and I do like this right here, um, this quirky, quirky cordies thing. Uh, it actually does kind of help it just look cleaner, especially if I have more stuff up here, which I don't right now, because most stuff is mounted under the desk. But uh, you know, still kind of cool to have one there. Works out good. Um, and then I got enough mouse cable here to make sure that I can go all the way to the edge of the mouse pad without any restriction. Might actually be able to shorten that a little bit. Anyway. I uh, also have a review of this baby coming soon, uh, which I mentioned at the end of the video again. But uh, yeah, beautiful mouse. Anyway, um, and then if you go around towards the back here, got a uh, cable that's pretty well organized back here. Uh, paper towel, sorry, and my router. So 
There's all that there. Looks pretty clean. That looks cleaner than the other side. Now we get under the uh, desk, which is where things get interesting. So under here, first, we've got my headphones sitting right here. GT770 Pros, 250 ohm edition. Beautiful. Um, I've got the cable kind of strung a little bit weird here. So I've got this slack here connected to this loop. So this is what I actually use to um, to uh, connect to my or to go up to my head. Um, so it's right in the middle of the desk, so it doesn't get in the way or anything like that. Then I run the cable under towards the bottom and connect it up over there. Uh, as you can see, some of the cables are actually connected and strapped to that leg there. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear the furnace there, not too much I could do about that. But anyway, yeah, they connect to that leg there, and then I've got a cable drop holding that cable, and then all the extensions come out of the J channel there. Probably should have put that J channel a little further over, but uh, best it's going to be right now. Then I got the uh, subwoofer down here. Um, and as you can see, I do have a little bit more work to do on this section right here. Um, not 100% sure how I want to lay things out yet, but I do have the cables coming off the sub in different directions. Looks looks a little little funky, but uh, I'll, I'll try and get that set up a little bit nicer at some point. Um, but then I got the two surge protectors plugged into that outlet. Over on the bottom of this desk is where things get really pretty, though. So, as you can see, a lot of stuff down here mounted up. So, uh, sorry for the cables in the way. But yeah, I got the uh, surge protector over there, which quite a few things are plugged into. Uh, my USB hub, which actually failed on me, so I'm going to be replacing that. Ugh, made me mad because it's all mounted up there and everything, but you know, whatever. Got my uh, power brick for my monitor up there. Uh, that ViewSonic monitor, it's such a beautiful panel, but the dumbest design I have ever seen when it comes to uh, capacitive buttons that you can't see on it and a power brick. Nobody likes that on that expensive little monitor, but anyway... Uh, continuing on, USB 3.0 port uh, hub there. I actually had to plug that into a 2.0 uh, port though because the peripherals, mice and whatnot, tend to not like a 3.0 port. But that's okay because I bought that for because it was high quality. And then I uh, got that up there. We've got my uh, oh hi my dog. <laughs> anyway, um, right there we've got um, we've got a USB 3.0 hub that's actually wired to 3.0. Um, which that is used for flash drives and whatnot, and a USB 3.0 um, card reader, which is actually wired 3.0 as well, um, which is just for transferring data off my camera when I do get one uh, that's nicer than this Note 5, <laughs> and transferring data off other stuff. Uh, then I've also got two micro USB cables hanging down here, both Samsungs, hang, uh, hung up there by uh, cable drops. This big cable here, floppy one, gonna probably mount it up there, zip tie it up or something. But uh, anyway, one of them's uh, connected to my fast charger, and then the other one will be connected to that hub uh, once I replace it so that I can transfer data from my phone. Um, so, you know, it's only 2.0, so it's not like I have to worry about 3.0 speeds or anything. So I got all that. Um, yeah, so there's these extra cables, which these are nice. I left some slack in them so that I can just kind of... Oh, well, one fell. <laughs> so that I can just uh, wire my... Uh, or run my phone and lay it up there. Just connect it like that. See that? Right there. And then uh, over here, a little hard to see, but I do have um, cables zip tied together up here running up into the break between the J channels. And then I've got the excess cable uh, kind of coiled, a little bit coiled. It's kind of hard to tell because they all have different lengths excess wise, but kind of coiled together and then uh, strapped to the uh, table leg here. So anyway, uh, that's that's pretty much the gist of the setup here for uh, external cable management. So, hope you guys liked it, and uh, just uh, let me know your thoughts. If there's anything that I could add to this, let me know. I'd be interested. Hey, everyone. So, um, I, you probably just saw the time lapse, and then I believe I, I showed you under the side of the desk and everything just a second ago. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see, did a pretty good job. Took quite a while. A lot of cables to deal with, almost more than I even kind of realized, you know, but, I mean, that's to be expected. So, um, anyway, overall I'm happy with it. There are a couple things I'd like to talk about, both tips for me for cable management and tips about some other stuff in relation to this. But um, first I want to say that I'm happy with the results. It looks great. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it clean. And um, overall this is something I would highly encourage anybody to, be, anybody to do. Um, you can do it probably for 100 to 150 bucks instead of, you know, 280 like I did. Uh, just depends on what you need and how much desk space you have. You know, I moved my system over it used to be right here and so I moved it over so that there was um, so I needed cable extensions and whatnot to fix that but um, 
generally it just it's just a better feeling while using the system. Um, this is actually I'm filming this a couple days after the cable management. I didn't have time to finish filming the same day, but um, after using it a couple days, I'll say that it just it gives me a it's a lot more of a satisfying feeling when you sit down at your desk and it's nice, it's clean, everything looks the way you want it to look, and it just gives you um, like I said, different feel. Just feels nicer to use your system. Um, anyway, though, getting on to a few tips that I have. Um, first off, I would say that definitely the J channels is something that I would say you really should get. Um, they have different sizes, different multi packs, and stuff. Um, the J channels I mentioned in the earlier earlier in the video were the big long channels to run the wires in. That is something that I would say is key to making it look a lot better. And it actually holds a surprising amount of wires. I have just maybe a little bit too many for it, but I was kind of able to squish them down in there. But uh, the adhesive on it's really strong. I don't think it's 3M, but either way, it's really strong. Uh, happy with those. So that's my really my main tip with the cable management stuff. The other thing I would say is try and mount as many things under the desk as you can, whether that be cables, hubs, stuff like that. Uh, it just gives an overall cleaner look rather than putting things on top of the desk. Like if I had USB hubs sitting up here or something, it's just not going to look as good as having them undermounted on the desk where nobody can see them because, well, they're under there. Um, so that that's my two biggest tips for um, doing cable management to your desk. Get the J channels, huge difference, and then try and mount things under the desk. Uh, honestly, I just use 3M adhesive, which uh, you guys probably just saw. Um, I just use a 3M adhesive put it on one side of whatever object I'm hanging up, slap it up there, holds really good, stuff's really strong. So uh, that, that's, you know, I'd recommend buying a pack of those, 10 bucks or whatever for, you know, a bunch of strips that you can use to hang all kinds of things everywhere. So I would go with that. So those are my two main tips for cable management. Um, you know, it's, it's not really something that I can do an exact tutorial on because it's not super, it's super specific to your setup. So of course I can't you know, tell you how it's gonna be for your setup. I can just recommend products like I did in the beginning of the video, show you what I got, and then show you how I mounted things, which I've already done under the bottom of the desk. So that's just you know, the tips, so to speak, that I'm giving you. Um, and I was you know, just bringing up those couple extra things that I really think you should have. Again, can't emphasize that J-channel enough. Big deal, huge difference. So now I'd like to go over one other thing if you take on a project like this on your own. It's something that we all know to do and we probably all don't do because we just don't feel like doing it or whatever it may be. Um, really, if you can, test your stuff before you get it. You know, we, we, most of us probably test our hardware before we get it when we build a system. Test your motherboard and your, you know, your graphics card and your RAM and your CPU to make sure it's all functioning properly in posts. Well, I didn't really think to do that with cables. I was like, well, they're cables. I've never had a cable shipped to me, you know, DOA, dead on arrival. Well, that actually happened. Um, one of the cables I got, dead on arrival, uh, was the Cable Matters 10-foot uh, display port to HDMI passive cable. Um, you know, not a huge deal, because I actually had an extra six foot, which is just barely long enough to connect to that monitor. So it's okay, and I'm gonna return it. And I'm not saying don't buy from them, because I've never once had a cable die on uh, die for me, die on me from them, uh, whether that be right when I get it or later down the road, except for this one cable. Just a fluke. It happens. You know, it's normal, and that's just that's just a thing that happens. And I knew, I do know it is the cable for sure, because like I said, my other cable works just fine. The one of the displays would not work um, with the the ten foot cable there. It just it wouldn't be recognized by the system until I plugged in the six foot cable. Same cable, different length, same brand even, just different lengths. So um, I had that fail on me, and then I also had uh, my 13-port uh, USB hub die on me. Uh, I'd say I won't be buying from that company again. Um, it's Sabrient or something like that, I believe it is. Uh, links in the description, you know, to the Amazon one, but I would actually not recommend buying that. It um, when I first got it, uh, it felt cheap, plasticky. wasn't really happy with that overall. But when I looked at the actual connector for the uh, power input, the DC power input, it was bent up inside, which I may have actually just shown you guys on there. Um, can't remember. But uh, anyway, the, the actual connector plug was bent up inside, and there was no way to unbend it without taking it apart. If I took it apart, well, then Amazon might not return it. So I'm just going to be sending that back, buying a different brand hub. I wouldn't recommend that one, though, because it felt cheap in the first place. And um, it technically functions without the power but not very well it's not really built 
with the right capacitors inside and whatnot to receive the power from, from the actual USB port, which judging by the board I'm using, which gives out extra voltage on the USB port, you would think it'd be fine, but it, um, it just, it's not working. I can plug a flash drive into it, but that's about it. I can't plug my phone into it. It just disconnects right away. Um, and I don't mean just for charging, I mean even for data transfer. Uh, the only thing I got to work on it was a flash drive. Nothing else would work. So just returning that, getting some other powered USB port, port, port <laughs> and uh, you know, gonna go along with that. Anyway though, thank you for watching uh, the cable management adventure, uh, so to speak, that I had here. Uh, I hope it maybe encourages you guys to do something similar uh, to your own setup. It's, uh, it's a really fun project, it takes some time, a little bit stressful some, at some points, but overall is just kind of fun to do and the end result makes your setup look a lot better. You know, no matter how much money you spend on your setup and how nice of a setup it is, unless you actually take the time to make it look pretty, it doesn't impress anybody. You could be sitting there with your 5960X and 4980Ti's and six monitors, but if there's cable clutter everywhere and garbage on the desk, nobody's going to really look at it and go, wow, that's a cool setup. They're going to be like, you. You know, especially people that maybe aren't as much of computer enthusiasts as, say, me or, or somebody else. But somebody that just, you know, a lot of people see a cool computer setup and go, oh, wow, that's cool, even if they don't know computers. So that's my point here, is it's something I would encourage you to do if you have the time and or money. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We have some more videos coming up. And in fact, to give you a little teaser, you probably didn't quite notice um, but I actually have a new mouse here. Uh, I hope that that's semi-visible in the camera right now, but um, I will be reviewing this. Uh, I'll be doing an overview sometime here soon, and then I'll be doing a uh, full review of it uh, a couple weeks from now after I play with it. But this is the uh, new Rat Pro X from Mad Cats. Uh, absolutely amazing mouse. Magnesium frame, just absolutely wonderful. Um, but anyway, that's just a little teaser. So anyway, make sure to subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and leave a comment if you have any questions, or uh, or uh, you can find us on Google+, Plus, Twitter. Uh, we don't use our Facebook account, but anyway, you can just look for us on Google+, Plus or Twitter. So thank you.